And I will not bore y'all with an incredibly long intro because some stuff happened at practice today. I'm Vash Lombardi, of course. That is Brian Broadus. Catch him on Twitter, B-R-Y-N Broadus. And we are doing just fine. Appreciate y'all for tapping in with us. Man, Brian, let me say this. Let me say this, Brian. I think we're learning on the fly how to be better draft scouts. And let me explain, okay? What, what I'm learning is... It doesn't matter what I like in a player or what I see in a player. Okay. It depends on the surrounding stimuli of when that player gets to that team. Don DeMarco. As a Don DeMarco. You remember that. Okay. Don DeMarco. Right. So in my mind, let's just say, for example, if the Cowboys draft corner in my mind, Al Harris is a phenomenal cornerbacks coach. If that dude got traits, that dude has a great chance of being a good corner. In my mind, that's what I feel, Brian. If you are an offensive lineman and you got good traits, you can block people like this. You can come, you can put your palms up like that. You can fall step. You can lean. You can play high. If you're willing to work hard and you come to Dallas, we got a dude across the street that'll fix any discrepancies or impediments to your game. And in five short weeks, Brian brought you'll look like a whole new character as long as you got traits and as long as you're willing to work hard. Now, Brian, it's been one day and I don't want to overreact, mm-hmm. but that's one day with pads on. Right. And that's a damn good day. Verse number 11. That's impressive. Yes. yes. Talk to us. And, yeah. And um, I'll tell you what, I think Duke does an incredible job with everybody that works with him. Yep. I think he's a, I think he's an outstanding teacher. I think he, the players trust him. He communicates well. His techniques are sound. They're solid. They're, uh, they're, you know, when you start to, watch these guys and I was ready I was ready for Guyton when Adoga started when Adoga went out of the lineup and Adoga was running with the ones today when they started the when they started the periods the team periods the competitive periods and he then had some back or hip discomfort and was out and then it turned into Okay, then it was about Guyton, and it was Awesome Richards. Mm -hmm. And then Awesome Richards got some reps, got beat a couple of times. They went strictly with Guyton from that point on. They just said, okay, let's go with Guyton here and see what we got. And I was waiting for Guyton to completely fall apart because all of a sudden it was, now you're thrown into the mix of, of having to deal with Micah Parsons, who played very little off-ball linebacker today. His, his main sole purpose, you know, however you want to say it, was to play right in today. And, you know, he got spelled a little bit, uh, you know, with uh, with Nealon playing to his side and some others, Johnson, Nealon, those guys. But mainly that was Guyton, one-on-one having to deal with Micah Parsons today. And I was ready for, like I said, for Guyton to fall apart a little bit. That technique would get bad. He's getting tired. You know, things are coming at him fast. It's coming overwhelming. Kid hung in there today. You know, and people are like, yeah, well, hey, you know, people are tweeting at me. They're like, hey, you think Micah Parsons wasn't really trying today? You think he was, you know, I would stand in. I was standing 15 yards. I was standing on the sidelines watching the drill, watching the period go, you know. And every rush that Micah Parsons could try and get home on, he was trying. There was no, hey, Rook, I'm going to give you a little break here. I'm going to, you know, Micah Parsons a lot of times came back hands on hips after the play was over, you know, getting ready for the next rush. And I will say this. I was ready for Guyton to really, like I say, to fall apart, and he didn't. He really didn't. And you know, I give uh, I give uh, the, the kids some credit. And as we've talked about earlier, I give Duke a lot of credit for the the guys that he's worked with. You could tell 
their technique sound, they're fundamentally sound, and they they produce. And if he gets your feet and your hands to work together at the same time, and and I think today was a really good day for for Tyler Guyton in his you know he's got a you know he's got time to go, but it, if you're blocking Micah Parsons and you're winning some of those battles. You, you could you could block a lot of guys in this league if you're blocking him. So good for him and and good for Duke for getting these guys ready the way he does. You know, Brian, it almost sounds you know clicheish or whatnot, right? But when when we would talk about oh when Tyron Smith would go against you know Randy uh, um, Randy uh, Gregory, Randy, right? Gregory, yeah. Gregory, like hey man, just win a few. You know what I mean? You know, just, yeah, hey, just win a few. Tyron yeah. is gonna whoop you, but just win a few. You know what I'm saying? And my yeah. whole thing about Guyton is that I'm like, hey man, Micah is gonna put you in some deep, deep water. Just yes. win a few, win a few. And what I've learned today, you know, it, you know, watching watching Micah, like plenty of his stuff is like athleticism, right? Just the yeah. burst, the ball get off. So yeah. when people were asking you, because they asked me too, hey, is this a bad day for Micah? Is Micah not 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 trying? I scoff a little bit because you see the damn ball get off that Micah got, and you still see the burst, you see the the closing speed and all that. It's just that that Guyton is also a big ass athlete <laughs> with with a lot of length, and he could he could bring you a lot of issues. It's not always clean, but he nope. has traits. Take a look at this one, Brian. I was I was um I was breaking down this one right here. Take a look at Micah getting off the football. Look at how fast he gets to Guyton's back hip. Right, yeah. like, like he yeah. gets there damn near immediately. That's ball get off and that's burst. That's bend. Look at how low he's getting right now. But right. Guyton just has the feet to recover right here. You know what right. I mean? He just has the feet to get his base back up under him and just run him out of the play. Right, like like that's even that's not a dominant Guyton win, but that's yeah. Micah didn't get Dak, and that's cool with me too. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's where uh, you know the thing with Micah, and it was, you know, you could watch him. You know, you could watch him when he was when he was going against Awesome Richards, or even Adoga. You know, there was. I mean, Micah Parsons is trying to rush the passer. He ain't he ain't interested. Now, when he when he really wants to, like on a fourth down play, you know, or I mean, there was a time where Awesome Richards was blocking Adoga gets knocked out. Awesome Richards goes in, and now it's a fourth down play. Micah Parsons got a sack. Yeah. You know, balls, out, but it was a sack. He is going to hit Dak Prescott, and it's going to be a sack. You know, Calvin Watkins and I looked at each other and, and both at the same time go, sack. You know, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's yeah, there you go right there. That's, that's that was a fourth down play right there. And the, the ball was, you know, the ball to me was, you know, kind of in that situation where the ball went low. But he, he's beat. Mike is, Mike is right there. Dak steps up, has to throw the ball, but, you know. I mean, you know, it, it, it's going to be like Micah Parsons is going to turn the corner and he's going to hit Dak Prescott in the back mm -hmm. is what he's going to do. And, you know, that that's going to happen. Micah is going to rush the passer, and he tried to rush the passer today. Sure. And, it, and it, you know, it, like you said, it wasn't always pretty with Guyton, but but his his athletic ability, you mentioned the length, the footwork, and just his just desire not to give it up. You know, he, he, I was ready for him. Like I said, I was ready for him to get tired and sloppy and fall apart. The kid didn't do it. And he, and he got thrown into a situation where, you know, the guy ahead of him got hurt and he had to jump in there. And I still, for the life of me, I keep going to say this, you know, again, uh, uh, you know, Adoga, uh, you know, Guyton needs to be the one. He yeah. needs to be left tackle one. Yeah. But today they brought back Adoga after, a couple of days of Guyton being left tackle one. I totally agree. I 100% with you. Uh, you, you know, and, and, you know, Chuma had a little, had a little hurt issue or whatever. I would love yeah. for Chuma to be healthy because I don't want to rely on, you know, awesome rich to let's go to be swing guy. I think, yeah. yeah, I think Chuma Doga is a very much so competent backup guy. But when we're talking about even in the non pad day, 
I was mm-hmm. fine with with Guyton being left tackle because you need him to get that experience. You need him in the water so he can know how right. to swim. But after this day right here, last episode, you said, hey, I don't need to see Chuma Doga no more. Right. A- after this day, I don't need yeah. to see Chuma Doga no more. Let's work on let's work on continuity now. Let's work on combo. Let's work on getting both Tylers on the same accord so that Guyton doesn't have to go, okay, is it is it Chuma today? Is it Tyler today? That's only gonna bring Tyler uh you know, uh, Tyler uh, down, right? So let's just play Guyton and not look back. Tyler Guyton should be circling Miles Garrett right now because there should be no excuse why he's on the bench, Brian Broaddus. And um, just th- this was much more about Guyton today than Neyland or Lawrence or Parsons today. Yeah, no, it, it was. And it was a good day. And, you know, and you mentioned Tyler Smith, a good day for him as well. Yeah. And you watched him play. Um the, the the times where I mean he's just such a powerful guy and then running some old school trap plays where he was a puller you know and then you got a good push at the point and then him identifying where the trap is and then being able to get that block and then the ball going behind him you know he it just shows you once again that I mean he is a really really strong guy the way that the way that he plays and so yeah I mean yeah, that's a great example of it right there there you go boom right there at the point of attack. And, you know, that's going to be a problem. You know, you step up next thing you know, you're going to have an earful of 73. And, you know, it it was, uh, I thought it was a really, really good day for, for him on the, uh, for the, uh, that left side, I thought played particularly well. Yeah. Tyler. And uh, and how about this, Brian brought us, we got some one-on-ones today. The O-line and D-line got some one-on-ones today. I was like, man, somebody must have some, some damning evidence against Mike McCarthy and they must have bribed him to get some one-on-ones going. Cause we finally got it going. Yeah. Barbara. How and about the- that? That is amazing because usually McCarthy is not the type of guy mm-hmm. that wants to embarrass his players. Sure. You know, Jason Garrett would call guys out by name and number and they would have, in, you know, in front of, you know, in front of the media, in front of the fans, in front of the whole team. Jason Garrett was a b- big believer in all that one-on-one stuff. Mike McCarthy, not so much, but it was good to see a little bit of that today. It's on my mind, Brian Broaddus. You just said it. You mentioned Gary. You mentioned Mike, and Mike typically doesn't do this. Do you think right. Mike has some time to look himself in the mirror and say, hey, let's cut out all this all this soft stuff? You know what I mean? Like, you know, we 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 need to compete, and let's compete in front of our our peers and an empty ass bleachers. Like, let's just <laughs> let's just do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I, I like the time is over where I'm just trying to like protect you. Like we need some toughness. We need to step up. We need to compete. We need to go one-on-ones and everybody needs to be watching because you need to bring like just one more level of whatever it is that you, that you normally bring. Yeah. I think you're exactly right about that. You know, there was a time where he was always, you know, he, he didn't want to do anything to expose uh, any, maybe some faults yeah. of his team and he didn't want to expose his players and it, it does take a certain level of toughness to before God and country and everybody watching to take a pass rush rep and try and block Micah Parsons. Yeah. You know, it, it takes, a, you know, or tank Lawrence or, you know, anybody else that's going to rush. And so I, I, I applaud him for, for, for doing this because I think it helps his team. You know, it helps his players. They can break down that tape. It, it surely helped. Um, you know, it surely helped the the young guys that were involved today, yeah. you know, that they were able to get those reps, those one-on-one reps on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. It, you know, it helps Marshawn Nealon to be able to rush against, you know, NFL tackles yeah. and, you know, guards. That, that that's, that's, that's a positive right there. Man, Brian, I saw this one clip on the internet, and I was like, boy, I can't wait to go tell the teacher, boy. Let me go tell Broadus what happened today. Cooper BB stepped in there and did his damn thing, sat down on who, whoever this. I think that's, uh, that's uh, Rogers or something. But sat down on him, phenomenal yeah. pass set. But, Brian, I must be honest, because if we're going to do some work, we are going to be fair here. Brock Hoffman didn't have a bad day neither, sir. Did you, no, he did not. He did, did, you, not. did you see anything about Brock that kind of jumped out to you today? No, I, I thought overall, though, that, you know, the, the we, we've kind of felt like that the best part of this offensive line, at least going into camp, were the were the inside players. Yeah. And, you know, with the, the guards and the centers that maybe uh, that that was going to be, uh, you know, with with Hoffman, there was one time 
where there was a one-on-one pass rush where he, uh, he was going against Carl Davis. Mm-hmm. And Carl Davis, for I don't know what got into him, but Carl Davis kind of bullied him and then went arm over swim move to get past him. He looked, I didn't see that, Brian Bros, because I yeah, got my hand that got on his ass. Well, go ahead. Yeah, and I, I was kind of like going, oh, Hoffman, that you know, that's that's not where we need to be. We don't yeah. need Carl Davis, who traditionally is just a straight bull rush type of a guy, yeah. all of a sudden coming with a, a butt and then an arm over, mm. and now Hoffman's left kind of not, you know, blocking is blocking air. Yeah. So yeah, but I, I thought overall though, when you looked at the team period, the the one on one stuff and all that, I, I thought there were several times where these offensive linemen did exactly, you know, and, and you're watching Mozzie so close in these practices sure. just because you're, and then, but he's going up against the Tyler Smiths and the Hoffmans and those guys inside. And so you're kind of like, and what they figured out about playing against Mozzie is that Mozzie is, you know, I'd love to see Mozzie throw an arm over yeah. like Carl Davis did, you know, but he's going to, he's going to bull rush. He's going to try and push. These linemen have figured out that if you get your hands inside and sit down on Mozzie, you can handle, you, you know, you're going to deal with power. But I wish Mozzie would come with the point where, you know, all of a sudden, see right there, I mean, he he can knock you back. He's yeah. capable of doing that. And that's, you know, but now if he comes with a little bit of an arm over, you know, and then Mal gets back inside, yeah. you know, but I, like I said, there's going to be days you know, where his, his power is going to be the calling card, but if he could develop some pass rush moves. And there was some stuff in the team periods where they were running the ball up inside. You know, there were a couple of times where Martin and Hoffman and Smith and those guys were coming off the ball and they were making it happen, you know, and the backs were able to kind of hit in behind that in that A and B gap. And, you know, you know, Mozzie, it's, 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 it's all eyes on. I mean, it's just all eyes on, but he's going to have to find a way to develop some pass rush moves. I'm not saying he's going to, you know, be, you know, some great three technique rush guy, but he's got to find a way to free himself other than just playing with power. You know, Mozzie is able to run down the middle of these guys because they're what we yeah. call hat on hat guys. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, exactly. I, I exactly. Was, I was just I was just letting my audience know because they didn't know that it was that it was different types of offensive line. And I was like, yeah, yeah, man, you got these dudes like Tyler Smith that roll up and and whoop people, right? Yeah. But then you have your Brock Hoffman's, your Basses, or whatever. And these yeah. are these are our players that I'm trying to get away from, right? But right. But a good play for them is they get a hat on a hat. And you just kind of do your job. They don't move nobody. They may right. go sideways a little bit, but if you get a hat on the hat, just let your running back read it, whatever, whatever. Right. Brock right. Hoffman is a really good hat on hat guy. Yeah. He engages and he kind of hangs in there. I want movement, but he's not killing us by being hat on hat guy. No, I think you're absolutely right about that. There's some guys that are that, you know, there are guys in back in the day, like the Travis Fredericks and people like that that you can see them get hat on hat, but they're getting movement. They're yeah. moving you out of the hole where the Hoffmans and the Basses and those guys are kind of engaged. And then you fight, fight, fight. And then maybe they screen you off or they turn you a little bit. And then the balls, you know, the balls passed. But you're, you're right about the description of those types of guys. Yeah, Brian, um, at some point I'm going to rely on your notes because I got so excited about the O-line, D-line stuff. I didn't give a damn about nothing else. But I got one thing that you probably was excited about here. Uh, they ran a screen, and they ran it to Rico Dowdle. How about that? And yeah. I, I was like, hell yeah, player. Uh, go, go ahead, sir. <laughs> I know you've been waiting on one of these, sir. Talk to me about this. Yeah, I mean, we're going to we're gonna throw a parade in downtown Dallas because we threw a screen here. I'm, I'm always happy when – you know, I, I maybe a little deck, maybe a little bit more depth, a little bit more depth, and then get rid of that ball. Got to invite those guys up the field, but yeah. nice execution of the screen. I, I will say this too: uh, we saw a little bit of Turpin in the backfield, sure you did. know, and and tossed him the ball. Uh, got a little juice on the run. Everybody in the uh, everybody in the crowd and the media and everybody's like, ooh, you know, when he gets the ball and they get they get that thing rolling uh, downhill the way they are. But you know, really nice job. I'll tell you what, uh, just. I could just ramble through guys and or positions, you know. I and I thought, man, you looking at linebackers today? Those linebackers overshone, uh, you know. Uh, Lufau, uh, you know Kendricks, Clark, 
these dudes came to play football today, mm. you know, that, and there you go. You show me the, that nice job there with that little, little toss, but a little juice on that one. But, uh, but the linebackers came to play today. Mm. They showed up, you know, Nation Wright got attacked a little bit in this period, the yeah. periods we had and came up big. Yeah. And, you know, and here's a guy that's kind of battling for a spot. And so I was impressed. They tried to go at Wanye Thomas. They were late to the ball on the outside. He was in really good coverage. Yeah. He got an interception. You know, there were some defensive backs that were making some plays today on the football. And that part of it I thought was pretty encouraging. I was really uh, – I'll tell you what, they did some pre-practice stuff before they went to team. And the more that I sit there and watch John Stevens run routes yeah. – Man, for a big, tall guy, for him to sink his hips the way he does and get in and out of breaks, yep. I mean, it's pretty damn impressive with that kid. He had a drop, though, in the period, but he, I mean, he he is he is so impressive with his ability to get up the field, sink, and then get out of that break in order to go get a football. So, man, they had, they had some guys with the pads on had some days. Like I say, those linebackers were – Linebackers got my attention today. That's a that's a good group of guys. When you look at man, they Zim ran a blitz. He ran a blitz where what they call a fire zone, mm -hmm. where Micah is coming. Micah is going to rush, 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 and he ran Micah. He faked Micah off the edge, so he took Micah, and all of a sudden they the you know uh, the they were Guyton and the you know and Smith were expecting to kick wide to yeah. set wide. And Micah dropped, and Kendricks came flying through the A gap untouched. Mm. And you're like going, "Oh, okay, I see." What, but that just shows you there's so much attention that's paid yeah. to Micah Parsons that all of a sudden they're thinking outside, outside, outside. He drops, and now you got the blitzer coming through the A gap. And you know we all know about Mike Zimmer. He, him, and those A gap blitzes. Or something that he's well known for, and he created a great situation to get a sack off of Micah Parsons' look. As far as your linebackers go, Brian, it's so yeah. interesting seeing them this year versus Overshown. the guys Holy last. Geez. You know, he, you know, he, he, wow. you know, he, he, he even said that he was going to go out there and just hit everybody today, right? But he did. It, you know, we are so far removed from like Anthony Barr playing here. You know what I mean? It's like if we had big guys. We, you know, they just weren't fast. Or if we had fast guys, they were small. And it seems right. like all the guys we have now, whether it be Kendricks, Overshawn, Clark Shore, um, Louisville, right. they are all, Michael Parsons. They're all yeah. big guys, but they're not lacking in the mental IQ departments. You know what I'm saying? So, it, right. it, it, you know, if 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 there's a most improved unit award or whatever, I think it it has to go to your linebackers, man. Because I was watching those dudes; they were flying all over the place. And we mentioned that yesterday, Brian. That even yeah. putting pads on, they're not allowed to tackle to the ground. But it's gonna be oh. some fast so running cool. thumping yeah. and it's going to be yeah. some some damn gap shooting today and 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 i saw i saw 13 flying all over the place yeah that's you know what vosh i i don't know if you brought this up and yeah. maybe you did, I did. and i'm going to give you credit if you did if if you didn't go ahead and take credit for it yeah i did but i wonder if they're going to do something with overshone now that you have an injury to sam williams of maybe trying to use him a little bit more as an edge rusher that's exactly I think, yeah. I think you and I talked about that. Yeah, because when y'all was doing day three draft coverage or whatnot, y'all was like, yeah. "Hey, you excited about Overshawn?" And one of the yeah. one of the scouts was like, "Yeah, man." And then using him as a pass rush type guy, we we're right, we're, we're right. Yeah, I wonder sure. if this is that Micah Parsons kind of, you know, all of a sudden he's an off ball linebacker, but maybe you find some ways to hand down, let him fly. Uh, stand up, let him fly. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe there's some stuff now that you, you're down Sam Williams yeah. that you're going to have to come up with some creative ways to kind of mask some of the things, unless you go out and get, you know, uh, a, a Charles Harris or somebody like that or yeah. Carl Lawson or one of those guys. Unless you go out and get another edge, maybe you're going to have to come up with a creative way. That, uh, that, that overshone is around the ball all yeah. the time. Yeah. He's around the ball all the time. Kendricks is around the ball all the time. Uh, Leofau 
get to the ball. You know, I mean, there's there was a time where Leofel went flying through that gap, tackle for loss, you know, tag off kind of a thing, beat the block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this group at linebacker looks completely different, completely different than what they had in camp last year. I mean, it is just it is such a refreshing sight to see linebackers that that play the way that they do and play in pass coverage well too. Sure. Nowhere to drop, nowhere to fit, you know, those those types of things. Um, one more thing, Brian. Did you uh you know, did you get a feel for because I haven't seen anything, Brian. And look, I've seen sure. I've seen Denzel Daxon clips, right? But I haven't seen Viliami anywhere and I've seen a no. little bit of I've I've seen um 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 Ghost in the day. Chauncey looks big, Chauncey looks like he's yeah. built for three tech right now. But tell me what you saw from Chauncey and have you seen uh um uh Junior anywhere of uh, yeah, at more more with Golston because sure. you're absolutely right. Uh, he's playing the backup three, yeah, and they and they gave him uh, an opportunity to run a little with Mozzie with the ones. Mm-hmm. So they've been trying to kind of rotate. He looks far more active than what you get from Fahoko. Yeah, you know, and so you know, and I, I you know, I wish uh, that I had the access to the tape. I think hopefully soon I will, mm-hmm. but the. The thing I would like to see about Fahoko is that, you know, he was coming out of college. He was an upfield player. Sure. He was a shoot the gap, tackle for loss type of a guy. And, you know, I think it's been a little bit of a struggle here. The pads, I'd like to see, you know, but he wasn't as noticeable as, say, Golston was, as with Osa. Uh, as those guys just play in the three technique. And, you know, there's people talking about, well, maybe he has to go back out and play in. I don't know if they want to do that. I think they're trying to keep him in one spot and keep him at that three technique. And But if it doesn't work out for him at three, you know, here we, here we are again. You know, if they keep trying to kind of flop you on positions in order uh, to see if they can find a spot for you, and you might not be good at any of them, mm. what it might come down to. Let's go find a free agent acquisition, sir. Um, yeah. I feel like I was going to ask you something. One more thing about, okay. So uh, I didn't see a whole bunch from Tolbert, but Jalen Brooks made some pretty good, you know, catches yeah. today. Uh, so what's the wide receiver battle looking like to you right now? Yeah. You know, it, to me, it's really been a lot about, you know, people have, have really talking a lot about, you know, Tyrone, Billy Johnson yeah. and what he's been able to do. Hopefully, you know, he can continue to, uh, to stack days. I think he had one drop that I saw. There was probably another catch or two that he had. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but there was a ball I think that went out to the left side that was that was a contested play that that, that came up a little bit short. But Tolbert has been the guy that when you start to talk about like of the of the guys that you're going to play against the Cleveland Browns with uh, he's the one guy that has shown up and had the most consistent days of practicing. You know, whether it's uh, it's you know down after down after down, day after day after day, where we've seen sometimes with uh, with Brooks, good day, good day. Where is he? Then good day. You know, so you need to be a little bit more consistent uh, with that. Uh, Racy McMath you know, had a nice play today. They were running a, uh, it was on a fourth down play and they were going to try and throw the ball to the flat. I think it was this Cooper Rush. They were going to, they set up the play to where they brought uh, Vaughn in motion across and they were going to set up a bunch formation, a trip formation to the left and they were going to throw it to Vaughn in the flat. Yeah. And, and it got covered and then Rush went back to the same side of the field where they were going to throw it to the side and threw the ball to McMath and he got the first down and was able to kind of separate there. So, you know, good for him for showing he's a big guy. I mean, he's a six, three guy. So, you know, you know, you got to find a way. I mean, you know, again, there's no, uh, there's no Ryan Flournoy out there practicing, you Mm -hmm. know, you'd love to see him, Yeah. but you know, the racy McMath, it's, you know, a play here, uh, you know, a play there kind of a thing. Uh, You know, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. But if you had to say the receiver that has shown up, the, the you know, Tolbert has shown up, and then uh, Billy Johnson has shown up as well. Brian, we are eternally grateful 
for everything that you do for us here, for all the information, all the nuggets and all the wisdom that you, uh, that you, uh, bring to the, we doing all right podcast, sir. Thank you very much. Get you some food and get you a nap. I appreciate it, man. Thanks to, uh, thanks to you guys as well. Uh, Another padded practice tomorrow, and uh, we'll be back same bat time, same bat channel, and uh, talk about it again. All right. Appreciate you, sir. Y'all follow me, Vosh Lombardi. I'm not going to be saying that, but if you want some actual information in the morning, uh, Brian Broaddus wakes up real early, and he just talks to y'all. So B-R-Y in Broaddus on social media. All right. We are doing just fine. Thank you so much. Crown. Crown.